So lots of congratulations on the Facebook page to uh, Ilza Hayes on the gold for South Africa and uh, Raymond Martin for his gold in the 800 metres. And next up, we've got the men's 400 metres, the T54 category. Zhang of China, the world record holder and the Paralympic record holder. At 45.07, which is an average of 20 miles an hour. But you've got to get up to that speed. You've got to get up to that average after a relatively so slow start. Wheelchairs don't, do not get up to speed nearly as quickly as runners do. These guys will be coming through that final 100 meters of 22, 23, 24 miles an hour. We've got Tati, who is the, the 100 meter, who was the 100 meter winner, which is so impressive. World record in the 100 meters earlier this week from Finland. See, no, at no loss for strength. Hui, Chinese athlete. We do see a lot of Chinese athletes, don't we? Mm. Zhang in lane four. There's Kenny mm -hmm. Van Vigel. Doesn't wear a helmet. You don't have to wear a helmet in 400 meters and below because you stay in your lane. You only have to wear a helmet once you start drafting. Which is an interesting rule because it's not to say that things can't happen in the 400 meters. When you're, the hardest part about the 400 meters I find is when you're going at that speed. If you're going at two, at, at 200 meters, you're going back into the turn, and it's hard to hold the turn. I find these guys are the T54 class. I was in the T53 class, which makes it a little bit more challenging because we don't have the balance that the that the T54s have. We don't have the torso muscles. Hoog's wearing his helmet because there's an aerodynamic advantage, it's the potentially. Shine. It's the shiniest reflecting helmet. You can always see the cameraman in his helmet. I always think he's a bit like Judge Dredd with that helmet on. <laughs> that might be the look he's going for. Marcel Hoog then, who's uh, on paper the fastest this Hello. season. Kenny Van Vigel of the Netherlands, look out for him as well. And of course, the, uh, the two Chinese competitors. Mark Shu of Germany as well, and Congen of Thailand. In fact, it's a it you're going to cover the whole field. I'm picking the whole lot. I'll I'll say Kenny Van Vigel or Marcel Hoog. Here we go. Hoog in the outside lane from Switzerland. Kenny Van Vigel uh, already up on his man in lane as five. Out in seven or out in eight. So Marcel Hoog has been uh, taken already by Mark Shu of Germany. It's a, it's a good contest here, but Kenny Van Vigel in the orange and white going well, but in the lead at the moment, Mark Schu of Germany. Marcel Hoog coming back, but he's got to go a long way around. Kenny Van Vigel in the middle there in the orange and white going very well, but on the inside of him, Zhang of China. It's going to be between these two at the moment. Zhang of China just edging ahead. Kenny Van Vigel coming back, but Zhang of China is going to get it. Zhang of China in the lead. Kenny Van Vigel in second place. And uh, just coming through to take the bronze, Konjen of Thailand. So I nearly called that one right. Kenny Van Vigel came second. Zhang of China, 46.88, personal best. Kenny Van Vigel, 47.12, another personal best. And season's best to Sai Shen Konjen, who got the bronze. Lu Cheng Ming with another personal best. And Tati of Finland with another personal best. So very quick track tonight. And there's the winner. Yeah, great race there. This is where it all happens when you come off of this turn. And it's just a matter of how much do you have left. And one of the things that looked like it was tough for Van Riegel was that he was bouncing his front wheel the whole time. And it's just, it's, you want all of that energy to be going into going forward, to going straight. And that little bit of a bounce causes them a little bit of a slow, slow down. The wheels are bent. People might wonder why there's the camber in the wheels, why they're not straight up and down. Mm. And there are two real reasons for it. One is that, that if they were straight up and down, you'd go around the turn and you'd fly up over the top. You'd fall over. The other thing is you can see right there where he has the black on the inside of his arms. 
and your inside of your arms will hit the push ring. So the mm. push ring is that ring in the middle of the wheel that you can see right there. Yeah. And if it were straight up and down, that push ring would be right at the top. So, so the thing is that with the, with the wheels being cambered out, you can get all that pressure into the wheel, get all the way to the bottom of the ring, which is really the fast part of the ring, without hitting your arm on the top of the wheel or not hitting your arm on the top of the, on the, top of the, uh, 